Hello, my name is Aaron Rosen, and my advisor is Dr. Wong, and the title of my presentation is Steroid OpenFlow Service. OpenFlow allows the flows of traffic to be controlled by network providers. This allows traffic to be easily be manipulated. This provides for new services to be seamlessly integrated with existing infrastructure. The problem that this service aims to solve is that TCP is unable to achieve high throughput over long lengths. TCP congestion window algorithms are overly conservative. The window size only increases once per round trip time, and drop packets causes the sending window size to be halved. Of course, there are more aggressive TCP variants out there, but this requires additional complexity for end users to go ahead and set up and configure these. <coughs> Steroid OpenFlow service provides a seamless enhancement to end-to-end -end application throughput over long-range links. This is an example of decoupling users' choice of protocols from the network protocol that providers would want to use to transmit data. <coughs> Again, the goal of this is to provide no modifications to the host and only provide seamless improvement. OpenFlow is used to detect TCP connection between the client and server. When this is detected, OpenFlow redirects the connection to a local agent. That agent then starts a high throughput transport to a destination agent near the destined server. The final agent then goes ahead and starts a TCP connection to the server. All of this is completely done dynamically, and the server and client have no idea this is going on. So this is an image of how today's internet looks. So now with Genie and having software-defined networking, we're now able to control the flows within the network. So for this server service, we deploy two agents along the forwarding path between the client and server. When the agents are started, they go ahead and start transmitting discovery packets, which allow the controller to learn about them. At a later date, the client goes ahead and initiates a connection to the server. The packet gets to the OpenFlow switch and then is forwarded to the controller. The controller now decides how to handle the packet. Since there are agents along the forwarding path between the client and server, the controller goes ahead and installs a ton of flows to, in order to control in order for this to happen. The first flow that gets installed allows the client's TCP connection to get directed to the nearby agent. <coughs> the agent here does header rewrite in order to make this process seamless. The next flow allows the agents to connect to each other using the high transport protocol, and the final connection allows the destined agent to connect to the server. This is completely transparent to the server and client. This was implemented and tested on Genie which allows full network visibility and control in the core of the network, which is pretty cool because you couldn't do this in today's internet. Genie provides a series of different compute resources from anything from VMs to bare bone metal boxes if you need the whole server. And they also have a large multi-path network that spans the United States. It also allows multiple researchers to experiment with the network at once through the use of site slicing. So I'm gonna give you a quick demo of this in action. <coughs> So I'm going to go ahead and start my controller. And when this is running, it should start to populate the map over there with the links and the resources in my slice. And all of this is done completely dynamically. The green and blue links just show two different paths in the network. The red links just show only where there's a single path. So I've configured the controller so when it gets a TCP connection on a specific port, it's programmed to take a specific path. So just to show you how bad TCP performs over the long length, which is the green path, I'll go ahead and start a TCP connection over that length. As you can see, this is going to take nearly 90 minutes to complete. So, <laughs> so now I'm going to go ahead and change this to use the short path, um, just using pure TCP. So this is going to be taking the blue link. So as you can see, this is a little bit quicker. It's going to take 30 minutes now. But that's still roughly a long time. So now using the SOS service that we have deployed, I'll go ahead and run it using the long path. As you can see, the time is dramatically cut. What used to take 85 minutes 
can now be done in 17 seconds. This is downloading a file along the green path from South Carolina all the way to Massachusetts. So again, this can be done using the short path, which will yield a similar result. Since OpenFlow is also deployed in the core, I'm able to exploit all the paths in the network in order to use bandwidth on multiple paths. So when I run, so when I start a connection using my, on another port, this goes ahead and uses both the green and the blue paths in order to utilize all the available bandwidth in the network. So the future work for this is to add more intelligence to the controller so that the controller makes more intelligent decisions on which flows would be a good candidate in order uh, for this service. In addition to dynamically load balancing flows to help route around congested paths in the network. This demo just shows an example of uh, optimizing the WAN. There are other paradigms that could be beneficial of using a similar paradigm such as this one. For example, mobility in networks. Thank you. Thanks very much, Aaron.